Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we'll talk about a new pathway for NAD plus biosynthesis. So we'll touch a little bit on metabolism, a little bit by chemistry, and then also we'll talk about supplements that increase levels of NAD plus. So most of what I'll be talking about today will be coming off the back of a recent publication in Nature Metabolism that showed this new pathway, or at least it investigated how this precursor, NRH, can be converted in a into NAD+, and it revealed that one of the critical enzymes involved in this process is adenosine kinase. Now, if that just went over your head, we'll break it down and go through it step by step in this video and explain what all of this means and why it could be interesting. So before I explain NRH and adenosine kinase, we first need to explain NAD+, and why you would want to have high levels. Well, you could argue that NAD plus is the most important molecule in the body, maybe with the exception of ATP, but without either of them, you're dead within 30 seconds. Now I've mentioned this quote before on this channel, and so NAD is a really important cofactor in the body, and it's very abundant, and it has a lot of functions in the body, but it can be split down into two main functions. So this includes its role as a redox coenzyme, and secondly, as a substrate for NAD-dependent enzymes. But the problem is NAD plus levels decline as we age. And so interestingly, studies have shown that by increasing these NAD plus levels it actually extends the lifespan in yeast, worms and mice, and it protects against this age associated decline that we do see in NAD, which is also associated with mitochondrial dysfunction, physical performance, lo uh, muscle, loss of muscle regeneration and decline in fission and other things you can see listed there. And so mechanisms to increase NAD plus level include supplements such as NR and NMN, which I've talked about previously in other videos, and in this video where I spoke about the link between NMN and improving fertility. But in this video, we want to talk about an alternative to these precursors and instead talk about NRH, otherwise known as dihydronucleotide riboside. So to get a broad understanding of NAD metabolism, because it is quite complicated, first I'm going to just draw out a map of what we know so far about NAD plus metabolism. So NAD plus stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and in the cell it's regularly, regularly converted between its oxidised form and NADH, which is its reduced form. And so, as I've already mentioned, two precursors, NR nicotinamide riboside and NMN nicotinamide mononucleotide, are upstream of NAD+. In addition, NAD+, can also be salvaged from tryptophan in the cell. And so NAD+, is used up, as I've already mentioned, in a variety of, of reactions within the cell, and that mainly is regulated through sirtuins and PARP enzymes, and also CD38. And that leads to the product NAM, or nicotinamide, and that can then be converted back to NMN, which can then regenerate NAD+. So these are the known pathways, but what we're going to talk about in this video is an alternative, potentially parallel pathway to also produce NAD plus from NRH, which is actually the reduced form of nicotinamide riboside NR. So we'll talk about how this happens and what's the evidence that's been found in this paper to support this and how could this potentially be used in understanding the use of supplements. So firstly, what is NRH? So I've already kind of mentioned it's dihydronucleotide riboside. So it actually is just the reduced form of NR, which you might have heard about as being one of the main supplements for increasing energy plus levels. So what actually started the study in the first place, like why did they start looking into this? Well, what they found was when they added NRH to mammalian cells, they saw a great increase in NAD plus levels, more so than they've seen with adding nicotinamide riboside. So how is this occurring? So to understand the steps that need to be taken to convert NRH to NAD+, you need to look at the structure of these compounds, because that will give you a clue as to what needs to be changed or modified to these structures to convert one to the other. So I've drawn out here the structure of NRH and also NAD+. And so what we can see if we work backwards is that to go from NAD+, to NADH, you need to reduce that nitrogen that I've highlighted in yellow, and then to get from NRH to NADH, you need to add phosphate and also add AMP to the structure to get NADH. And so if you're struggling to understand this, it's maybe easier to understand it through the parallel pathway, which is converting nicotinamide riboside to NMN, 
to N80+. You can see that it's pretty much the same, it's just it's the reduced form in terms of NRH going to NADH. That is the, the main difference between the two. Yeah, I said it was going to get a little bit complicated. But anyway, the main point, what they were trying to do in this paper was to find the protein that converts NRH and adds phosphate to it to form NMNH. So the fancy biochemical name that we give to proteins that have this activity are kinases. So to identify the specific kinase involved in this reaction, the authors took a proper biochemistry approach. And what that basically means is you have your cells and you extract the proteins from it. And then what you do is you can fractionate these proteins based on their charge and also their size. And then you can do an assay for each of these different fractions to see which one has the, the activity that we're looking for. In this case, the activity of converting NRH into NMNH. And so some of them have it, some of them don't. But it's the ones that do have the activity that you can then further examine and see exactly what proteins are in that fraction. And they did that in this case, and adenosine kinase was in the fraction. And I've skimmed over a lot of details, but they identified adenosine kinase in this manner. If you do want a little bit more details, just ask me in the comments and I'll try and explain a, a bit more. Anyway, to confirm that adenosine kinase is indeed the correct kinase responsible for this reaction, they then took two approaches to, to test this. So one of them was to take some cells that had well, they're not expressing adenosine kinase, the gene's been knocked out. And so what you can see in the graph is that by knocking out adenosine kinase and then adding NRH, you don't get that increase in NAD plus levels that you can see in the normal cells. And the alternative approach they took was a pharmacological approach. And instead of knocking out adenosine kinase, they used an inhibitor and that also had the effect of reducing the NAD plus levels that you can see I've, I've indicated that with the pink highlighter. So these two approaches have both shown that adenosine kinase is critical for getting that increase in NAD plus levels when NRH is applied to the cells. So I feel like a summary is needed at this point to really explain why this is interesting and how this actually relates back to the big picture that is NAD plus metabolism. So if we actually go back to the map that I drew out to begin with and fill in the knowledge that we now have, we know that NRH, through the activity of adenosine kinase, is converted to NMNH. And as already known in the literature, NMNH can be converted to NADH and NADH can be converted to NAD+. But the interesting thing is that adenosine kinase was already known about and its main enzymatic reaction is converting adenosine into AMP. And this is interesting because AMP can be converted to ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy currency of a cell and is important for numerous reactions. And so these two compounds, NRH and adenosine, actually compete for the activity of the enzyme. And so this provides a further connection between ATP metabolism and NAD plus metabolism that are both critical for understanding energy use within a cell. So now we'll move on to what are the implications for NAD plus supplements. So as I said at the beginning of this video, a lot of people take NMN and NR as supplements to increase their NAD plus levels. But what's known is that NIH is actually superior at increasing the concentration of NAD plus so far based on in vitro studies. And this actually acts as a parallel pathway as we've seen compared to NR and NMN because it uses the reduced forms. So one question is, could they potentially be used in combination such that you get an enhanced effect by taking both NR and NRH as supplement? Or would NRH alone be a superior method that is safer? Well, the fact is, is at the moment, we actually don't know too much about NRH as a supplement because it hasn't really been tested yet. And so there's a lot of understanding that we still need to have about NRH before that's even considered. And firstly, really we need to work out what the impact is in this competition with adenosine metabolism. And then secondly, and apologies this may cause further confusion, there's a potential link between methylation and homocysteine levels that I've mentioned before as being a potential risk with taking NMN or NR as NAD plus precursors because one of the products, nicotinamide, gets methylated 
and this results in the production of homocysteine and also actually results in the production of adenosine and as we said adenosine is the substrate for adenosine kinase which is involved in the NRH reaction but that's a little bit of a sidetrack ignore it completely if you don't understand it and then secondly we know that NRH potentially could increase levels of NAD plus more so than nicotinamide riboside or NMN but is really high levels a good thing you know too much of a good thing could be a bad thing and then there's also the understanding of the pharmacokinetics and the solubility of NRH and the feasibility of it even being considered a supplement and then just the icing on the cake I don't think it's currently known how NRH even gets into the cell so there's a lot of work still to be done and to try and understand the role of NRH but this definitely does add a puzzle piece to the jigsaw that is NAD plus metabolism. So I hope you've learned something and I'm sorry if this was just crazy complicated, I do apologise. But anyway, as always, thanks for listening.